Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today we are playing around with a new toy we just got. We are cutting and engraving stuff with lasers. So I just picked this thing up. We've been having some fun with it and we're gonna have some more fun with it on the video here. This is a great entry level etcher. You can get it with up to three different print heads. The lower power ones like this one down here are great for doing you know, paper and stuff like that. When you get into the higher power ones, you can etch into wood and even into metal. And then it's even got one that's got a longer focal length and that's more for actually cutting. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do that. I'm gonna then mess around with it. We're gonna try to make toast. So you're gonna wanna stay tuned to the end of the video for that. And then um, I'm also gonna try to cut some cheese with it because why wouldn't we cut cheese with it? Sounds like a good idea. Um, but the other thing is this one, it doesn't have the best instructions. So what I'm gonna do is at the very end of this video, I'm gonna run through the entire setup process, how to get this thing set up, how to hook up each one of the three heads, and also what software to use and how to use it. So you should be able to take it out of the box and get this thing totally set up using the end of the video. Now pulling one of these things out of the box is a little bit intimidating, but it really worked out to be a pretty simple process. Um, I'm here, I'm putting a JPEG into the software. The software turns it into a file that I can send to the printer. You can see here I'm putting on those stylish goggles. Those aren't just to make me look like a robot. Those are actually to protect my eyes. This is a very, very powerful laser. So what you do once you got that in there, you can aim it. That's what I'm doing right here. And then you can actually have it run a pattern. It'll show you where it's gonna be engraving so you can get it lined up exactly on the material where you want. Once everything's done, you send it and it starts to actually do the engraving process. Now, one thing to note, it looks really, really cool when it's running like this, but it looks a whole lot cooler when you turn out the lights. Now, it takes a varying amount of time depending upon how big and intricate your engraving process is. I've seen it take as short as two or three minutes and sometimes as long as 20. Now, something that I was really impressed with was the resolution on this thing. And I don't know how well you can see it here, but it does a very good job cutting very small letters. Now you can see here, I sanded down the guitar neck so it wouldn't be having to go through the finish. And I'm gonna be refinishing the entire thing once we're done. I wanna try, this thing supposedly can etch into anodized aluminum and I wanna give that a shot. So let's try that. And this is the piece of aluminum that we're gonna be etching into. Now this is actually an aluminum wallet from our video sponsor, Exter. And what's cool about this wallet, I switched over to the, the like kind of money clip card pocket wallets because I was sick of having a thick wallet, but getting the cards, that was always a pain. This thing's got a little button. Well, Look at this. Your cards pop right out and then you can pull them out. But the body of it is made out of anodized aluminum. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the little money strip off it and load a file in and we're gonna try etching into anodized aluminum here now. Now for every surface that you're etching into, there's different uh, laser intensities and also different pass speeds that you need to set up. And I explain all that at the end of the video when I do how to set up and run this thing and how to play around with, it with the software. So if that's something you need information on, you wanna stay tuned to the end or I'll have a link down in the bottom, which will show you where to go. Now, the wallet itself is, uh, is a pretty neat little wallet. It's got some other cool stuff that comes with it. And I do have a link down below if you wanna check those things out, it'll be down in the description. And while the engraver is finishing up down there on the wallet, I wanna show you this other cool little thing it comes with. I can't engrave into this, unfortunately, it's plastic and there's electronics in it. But what it is, this is kind of like a uh, finder for your wallet. It is thin, so you can put it in your wallet just like a credit card, and um, it'll tell you where it is. It connects to your phone, really similar to some of the tile chips and whatnot, but what's neat is this thing is rechargeable. It's got a little solar panel right there. So I've actually lost my wallet since I started using this thing, and I've found it twice. Um, I lose everything. I'm going to have to get some more stuff like this, but pretty cool. Uh, let's go and see how this thing's doing. It's almost done. All right, let's see what we got here. Check that out. I am so blown away by the resolution and how good this looks. You can't see pixels or lines in here. It's, it's crazy. Um, but while we're looking at that, you know what you could do? You could help us out big time by going and crushing that little subscribe button down below. Okay, so I figure you toast, toast in a toaster. I said toast like five times there. You toast, toast in a toaster and it makes it hot. This makes things hot, so we might as well make toast with lasers. And if we're gonna make toast with lasers, we might as well print instructions on the toast so you know what to do after you've toasted it. How many times did I just say toast? All right, I have no idea if this is gonna work. I always gotta wonder what the heck the neighbors think when they walk by, they're walking their dog and they see this happening in the garage. That's what we were going for. 
that's what we got. I, I think we're pretty, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with that. And you know what? I'm never one to disobey bread. I love toast. Now, let's go a step further. All right, for our next trick, take a little piece of aluminum foil to protect your wood, and I've got a piece of pepper jack cheese. We're gonna try to engrave a Bob Ross painting into a piece of pepper jack cheese. Now, Kraft Singles is not cheese. Fight me in the comments. All right, here we go. I have a feeling this is not gonna work. All right, Bob Ross is not working at all. We're going to switch gears a little bit and try something a little bit different. All right, we're going for the gusto here. Um, I've actually set it to cut. I'm using plywood settings and thick plywood settings, and uh, we're gonna see what this thing does. Even if this doesn't work, I can at least make who cut the cheese jokes. Oh God, that smells. But it is actually, it is actually cutting the cheese. I know I said earlier, well ventilated area, but this is the worst smelling thing. I don't know why just burnt cheese smells so bad. All right, so we're gonna call it quits on that cheese. And that is because that is the worst smelling cheese I have ever smelled. It actually etched into the foil a little bit. So we've learned a couple things today, aside from playing around with our uh, engraver here, we've learned that a engraver will indeed cut the cheese and toast from a laser engraver tastes terrible. So now for the tutorial portion of this video or how to use this thing. Like I said, the instructions that it came with weren't the best. So I wanted to kind of show you how I got this thing working. I'm going to start by setting up the lowest power engraver. So you got your engraver head. You want to locate the little screw. And that is actually going to thread right here into your print head. Now we're going to touch our print head to the printer. The print head itself slides right down on this rail. When you first install it, it doesn't matter how high or how low you get it because we're going to be adjusting that later. With this installed, now you're going to get your connector cable and you'll notice there's two pieces. This is the actual signal wire right there. That's going to clip every one of these has a little connector. Snaps in place and then it has this little ground shoe. That you're going to slip underneath one of the little Allen screws here, and then we're going to tighten that down. And that's all there really is to actually installing one of these. Now we have to set the height. And setting the rough height of this is also pretty simple. It comes with this little metal piece. You put the metal piece right underneath the engraver body right there, and unscrew the screw and drop the body down until it rests right on top of that. So you want it this distance away from your cutting surface. So depending upon what you're cutting on or engraving on, this is gonna change. Okay, so now we've got the engraver head installed. Let me show you the software. Now in the instructions, it came with two different options for software and I'm gonna show you the one I'm using. So this is the software I'm using. It's Laser GRBL and it is free and it's relatively easy to use, although the same kind of thing applies. It doesn't really come with much in the way of instructions. Now there is another one that will work on Mac. I believe that one you do have to pay for, um, but right now I'm running this on one of my PCs. So when you first hook your engraver up, you're gonna come up here to GRBL, click on that, and you're gonna see a connect disconnect icon right here at the very top. So you're gonna come up here and hit connect, and now our engraver is connected. So now that we're connected, and you can see we're connected because we got this stuff here, if you don't have that stuff there, something is going on, you might wanna try different COM ports. Now, the next thing we wanna do is, obviously, we wanna engrave something. We're gonna come back up here and go file, open file, and what's really neat here is you can engrave pretty much any JPEG. So we're going to come right down here, select a JPEG, and we're going to do the YouTube subscribe button. And hey, since it's on the screen, you might as well go subscribe. Um, now down here, you can do all sorts of changes to it. We're just going to use this guy right here. It just crops the whole thing. And go next. It gives us some options. We can change the size of the image. We're going to change this thing... Let's go, let's go 50 wide. And then this is something you really wanna pay attention. If you come up here to engraving speed, if we open this little guy up, 
it's going to give you options on which laser cutter you have. So right now I'm running the lower wattage one. So we want to come up here and pick the 1.5 watt engraver head. Then you select your material and we're going to be going into plywood. So we're going to leave it as plywood, but you can pop this thing open and you can change the material type depending upon the head and then hit apply. Now that we have that all set up, create. And now it's made our file, how it's actually going to do the engraving. Now you notice down here, there are a couple different options. And I'm gonna show you what each one of these does. The focus option here, it turns the laser on in the lowest laser setting. And this gives you the opportunity to focus it one last time. So you want that dot as fine as the dot can be. And for this, you wanna make sure you're wearing the fashionable green glasses that it came with. It lets you see the dot a little bit better, but it also protects your eyes. And you can see we've got the dot right there in the middle and nicely focused. Now the next one to notice is this one, frame. If you click frame, it'll actually draw a box around where the image will lay on the wood. And that way you can actually line up your material to make sure it engraves in the right location. And the last one that I've used a lot is this one. That is the zero point. So you can set where you want the engraver to start in the lower left corner. You can actually just hold it and move it with your hand. And then we click that and now we've set the new zero point for the engraver. The zero point is where the laser is going to start engraving. So now if we actually wanna send this file to the engraver, we're gonna come up here and hit file, send to machine, and the machine will start engraving. Now that exact same process applies to every other engraver head that you have. So like I said, this engraver head, this is the lower power one. And then you have the two higher power ones. They all set up exactly the same. They all have a little cleat on the bottom of them that that wire goes into. They've all got little screws that you're going to attach the ground connector to. Now this one is the 30 millimeter focal length and this one is the 50 millimeter focal length. So the 30 millimeter focal length is gonna be more for engraving and then the 50 is gonna be more for cutting because you want a long thin line to cut through stuff. So let's cut some stuff. So we've removed the engraving head, the lower power engraving head. We've gotten our higher power cutting head. Take the little, take the little thumb screw off the one, put it on the other and slip that head right in there. We're gonna tighten it down just to hold it in place before we have a chance to focus it. Now we're gonna attach our ribbon cable, same deal. We're just gonna clip it into the back, the little ground cable. This one aims pretty much the same way. You have to get this little shield up out of the way, but we're gonna place the little metal slug underneath there, lower it down so it's the same, same distance off and then snug up that thumb screw. Now this little shield here, we can bring back down. And now we've got our cutting head set up. So what I'm trying to cut out here is a medallion, a circle out of the wood with a little hole in it. Now I've got it up here. I changed the settings on here. Remember on that little drop down, I changed it to the higher power output and I've actually set the home point at the very corner here. I've got my piece of plywood on top of another piece of plywood. So that way when it cuts to this, it won't also cut through my workbench. I learned that lesson the hard way playing around with this thing. Now I'm going to use the framing tool here to make sure it's gonna cut where I want it to cut and not cut over other stuff. Now, when it does this framing thing, it runs the laser at a very low setting. So it's, it's safe to not have these on when you're having it do that. Now we're gonna put these things on we're gonna cut some stuff. Now it's important to know that this does generate a fair amount of smoke and at least this is wood, but depending on what you're cutting through, it could be really toxic, nasty fumes that are coming up. So make sure you're doing it in a well-ventilated area. I'm in my garage, but I do have an exhaust fan up there that's helping pull the air out. But if I was doing anything other than just wood, I would definitely be doing this outside or with my garage door open. Another thing to think about is in the act of doing the cutting or the engraving, it is basically burning. So it might not be a bad idea to have a fire extinguisher nearby just in case something happens to go sideways. All right, so we finished cutting with the uh, cutting head. Let's pop this thing out and see how we did. So you can see here, it did a pretty good job of cutting out that medallion. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put it back down. We're gonna change heads again. We're gonna switch over to the engraving head. The only difference with this one is that the little feet here 
get screwed in place instead of using an Allen key. Now with this one, it's got a little bit of a shield and the magnet comes off like that. And we can do the exact same thing that we had done before. We're gonna set our height the same way, tighten it down, and now let's go put a new file in. Now remember again on this one, we are gonna have to change some of the head settings. We still have it at the 4.5, but we're not going to be cutting. We are going to be engraving. And that changes the intensity of the laser and it also changes the pass time, how fast or slow it goes. When it's engraving, it'll go faster. When it's cutting, it'll go slower. So I think it's all focused. Let's give her a go. And you can actually see the pass time is much quicker. So when it's doing the engraving, it runs a lot quicker. It also is gonna finish the file a lot faster. Let me, let me bring in close so you can see this. And it's done. Let's pull this thing out of the side. Take a look at it up close with the camera. That is pretty darn cool. So cool. I think we gotta do it to the whole workbench. So hey, I hope you enjoyed playing around with me here in the shop with this new laser engraver. And I hope this video helped you out if you decided to pick up one. Now, if it did, please hit that subscribe button, give it a thumbs up and let me know down in the comments what you thought of this video or what new toys you'd like to see us playing with here in the shop. And of course, thanks for watching.